and welcome back to Love Your Food. This week we are doing a classic Korean pork bone soup. Now before we get started, I'd like to remind everyone that we have a Patreon if you'd like to support us there. I will put a link in the description below. I will also put a link in the description below to our affiliate link with Chef's Temp. If you need a kitchen thermometer or meat probe, please check them out and use code LOVEYOURFOOD on checkout for 15% off your order. In the meantime, here's our ingredients. We've got some pork neck bones, some gochugaru, some gochujang, some perilla leaves, some black pepper, some ginger, some dried hot pepper, a dried shiitake mushroom, some garlic, some fish sauce, potatoes, an onion, some green onions, some ground perilla seeds or ground sesame seeds, and then doenjang, or we're going to use miso and gochujang for that, some napa cabbage, and some bean sprouts. So the first thing we're going to do is get our meat ready. Now, uh, this is pork neck bone, and it's typically a little bit fatty. There's some marrow in there, and it is fairly traditional to rinse and even soak the meat for a little while. And this does a couple of things. Number one, it uh, washes any, if your you know, butcher isn't super, super clean, it cleans your meat. Um, but also, it tends to denature some of the... Um, the color of the bone marrow, and it makes it uh, a little more attractive color when it's cooked. Otherwise, it comes out looking a little bit bloody. So this is just a, a means of taking care of that. So while that's soaking in some cold water, we're going to get our uh, cabbage ready. And we are going to blanch this in some salty water. So we're going to take these half cabbages and drop them into some uh, boiling uh, salty water for just a little bit of time, not for very long at all until they get a little bit wilted and that bright green color comes out. You can tell really, really quickly when they're done. Uh, they get that really vivid green color. It's amazing. And we're going to put that into some cold water right away. And we're going to shock that to stop it from cooking. And then we're going to drain those. So we want to make sure that once those are back down to cool, we're going to drain them. We're also going to blanch our pork. So after the pork uh, bones have been uh, soaked in that cold water for a little while, we're going to blanch them in the same water that we did the cabbage in. And uh, the, there's some uh, chemicals in the cabbage that will actually help tenderize the meat on, that, uh, on those neck bones. While that's going on, we are going to get some of our other ingredients ready here. So this is the ginger. Ours is quite old and uh, a little bit uh, concentrated right now. So we're going to cut this into really small little pieces. So into matchsticks and then from there into uh, a sort of a dice. And if, if your ginger is a little newer than this, it's going to be easier to cut and easier to peel. Uh, ours was very old, a little bit floppy, but it's delicious when it gets concentrated like that. The onions, we're just going to cut into half rings. Uh, and they're just going to go in like that. That's how they're going to enter the soup. And there we have all of our ingredients set. So once the pork bones uh, are, get to about this point... We are going to put those into the final pot. This is the one we're going to use to actually make our soup in. And they've been boiling in that, uh, in that water for a little while. And we're going to put these into our soup pot and they are ready to start cooking. So we've got some heat on under there. We've got our pork bones in there. We're going to take a little bit of the uh, water from in there to mix together the miso and gochujang for this. Now, as I said earlier, uh, this is typically a fermented uh, miso sort of paste called doenjang, but we're just going to sort of approximate it with white miso and gochujang. So we're going to add that into our soup base here, and that's going to add, uh, that's, this is going to form the basis of our soup. So you want to mix that in until it's well combined and it's uh, spread throughout the, all of that water. It's sometimes a little tough around those uh, pieces of pork. In goes the dried pepper and the dried shiitake mushroom. And in goes the chopped ginger and all of our onions as well. Now we found out a little bit later that uh, this soup is much bigger than it seems. And it wasn't, uh, we didn't have quite enough space in our pot overall for everything. Uh, but it was fine. We got right up to the rim. Now uh, we're going to try and break up those pieces of onion a little bit. And then we're going to top everything off with enough water to basically cover everything. And all the amounts are going to be in the description below. So once you get your water in there and you get that heat going again, 
Uh, this is going to simmer for quite a long time, so just give it a stir. Make sure everything's uh, not stuck to the bottom or anything. You want to make sure it's still moving in there. And uh, we're going to cover that, and that's going to cook for quite some time. In the meantime, we're going to get uh, the rest of our ingredients ready. So there's basically this paste that we're going to assemble, and that's going to be one of the finishers on the, uh, on the whole dish. So we're going to really finely chop some of this garlic here. It doesn't have to be pretty. Uh, <laughs> you can... Uh, I mean, you can do it fancy if you like. You can do, you know, perfect little uh, little cubes, but we're just going to chop it up um, into pretty small pieces. So in goes our garlic. In goes our black pepper uh, that we ground. In goes the uh, gochugaru, which is a Korean spice powder. And in goes the dried or the ground perilla seeds. In our case, we're using... Uh, ground sesame seeds. And we got them nice and toasty before we used them. Uh, we're also adding, again, a little bit of gochujang in here. And that's the uh, Korean hot, hot and spicy chili paste. It's really delicious. It, co it holds just a bunch of flavor. And also we're gonna add our fish sauce. So we're gonna add uh, three tablespoons of the fish sauce. And we're going to finish that off with just a little bit of water as well once we've added the fish sauce. It also helps to clean the last of the fish sauce out of your tablespoon. And just a little bit of water in there. And we're just going to mix that together until it forms a pretty uniform paste. And you'll see it here. Once it's all well combined, it's got that nice sort of fiery red color from the gochujang. And um, after that, it's just a matter of chopping up our green onions. And this is going to be one of the things that gets added a little bit later on in the, in the recipe. We just want to make sure everything's ready to go when it's time for it to go in. And like we did for some of the other recipes that we did in this sort of series of little Korean uh, recipes that we, that we did read this little series, um, we're going to cut these into kind of matchsticks, into long, thin strips. Just to go with everything else in there. And... Uh, after that, we're going to peel our potatoes, and these are just going to go in. We're just going to cut these in half, and they're going to go in mostly whole. Nothing fancy with the potatoes. Uh, they're sort of our barometer to find out when the soup is done. Now, we're going to take that dried shiitake mushroom out, chop it kind of nicely into, uh, into strips, and then add it back in with all of these other ingredients. And here is our nicely drained and chilled uh, Napa cabbage, and we're just going to cut that into smaller pieces so that it's a little easier to go in. And here's where we found out that we may have overestimated how big our pot is. Everything else is going in. All of our ingredients are going in. So our mushrooms, the potatoes, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, green onions, or part of the green onions at least, some of them you can reserve for uh, garnish at the end, as well as that Napa cabbage, and the, bre uh, the bean sprouts that I mentioned at the very, very beginning. Uh, you just want to give them a little rinse, make sure they're clean, and in they go. You just want to make sure that everything is uh, underneath the, the level of the soup, so you're just going to give everything a little stir here. And then we're going to add in our paste. So we're going to scrape all of that out of the bowl, and you want to give that a little stir as it goes in, just to make sure that uh, it's combining well with the rest of the ingredients. And you just want to give it a little stir, yeah, and make sure it spreads throughout and then we're going to cover this again once uh, we've, you know, moved it around a little bit enough that it's, uh, uh, you know, dispersing through the entire, uh, the entire uh, soup. And then once it's all well stirred and well combined, we're just going to cook this until everything, uh, mostly until the potatoes are cooked and until the meat is cooked. So once those potatoes reach the point you want, that is done. So while we're waiting for that to happen, we're going to get our garnish ready. So here's the rest of the... Uh, green onions, as I said. Some of it's going to go in very, very late, and some of those perilla leaves are also going to go in, as well as reserving a few for garnish uh, raw at the end. So this is after it is cooked for quite a long time. This is uh, sort of the last step before serving. So you can see here that potato is starting to get nice and soft. That pork is beautiful and tender. So that is basically done, and from there it's only just serving it. So you can turn the heat off at this point, and then if you want, you add a little bit more of that perilla leaf as a garnish and a little bit more of the green onion. You can see how nice and soft the potato is. That, uh, that 
Uh, pork is super, super tender, really, really delicious, kind of falling off the bone. And that uh, cabbage has soaked up all of the flavor from that paste. And that's it. That's the whole thing. You can see in there the uh, little perilla leaves on top. Um, absolutely delicious, full of flavor, really, really excellent. And we hope you'll give this one a try. If you like this recipe, please do like and subscribe. And if you have any recipes you'd like to see Chef Caleb try on the channel, please let us know in the comments below. We'd like to thank our patrons over on Patreon. Uh, if you'd like to support us there, you can check the link in the description below. And remember to love your food.